Welcome back everybody. In this video, I'm going to show you how the flipper tool works here in D3 Lab. Um, basically, I have this model here ready to go. Um, we've already done a virtual extraction on it. And um, yep, I just have it ready to go. Press the flipper tool and hit go. First couple steps is getting it into a certain alignment. Um, this is necessary just for uh, some steps down the road. Um, in the same tool. It just needs to know what orientation the model's in. So um, you have to do that for the first couple steps, but that's okay. You do that, and then, um, then it says to select a region of the, of the model there that you intend to use to generate your, your flipper. So this is kind of like a region of interest or something like that. Um, if you've heard that term before, you can select the whole model if you'd like, but um, really this just helps to make um, things go faster, things go quicker. Um, also, um, visualizing things is a little bit easier when you don't have the rest of the model there, so just kind of aids in, in those things, uh, but mainly just to make things go faster. Um, so this is just a, a segment of the model. You're still going to do a selection on this segment, um, and that's what we're doing right now, which is uh, to select the flipper base. Now you can draw like I was just doing there, um, or since we have this model already segmented in a prior step, um, the easier thing to do here is, in my opinion, is just to go ahead and do the select brush, which is just, you can uh, activate by hitting S or, um, changing it in the upper left there from lasso to brush. And I'm just selecting just kind of very generously all around the gingiva, um, uh, surrounding the teeth that I intend to include. Um, on, you know, in the flipper base. Just kind of getting into those little embrasure spots. And then um, also um, a decent part of the palette here. And I'm just doing this very quickly. This is just an example. Um, I don't know if this would be a really good design for, for a flipper, but it, it might actually, you know? I mean, all you really need is just a little bit of the uh, palette there and some good embrasure retention and and it should be fine, um, especially if it's just temporary. But either way, what I'm doing now is um, I'm holding control down and double clicking on all the existing teeth. So that will remove the selection on those surfaces. So what we're left with is just this nice gingival selection. So it's almost easier to do it that way um, than drawing with your, you know, by hand um, with the lasso brush. So the settings over here, flipper um, thickness, We'll keep it at two. Um, impression spacer gap, you can change that. Um, there's one more option down there, modify tooth connector length. We don't need to worry about that now, but I can kind of uh, explain that at the very end here. So this is just going through the steps of generating the flipper base, similar to the virtual vacuum former, similar to the custom tray, at least for this first part here. A little bit different. There's some different remeshes and different things going on, um, but still it's kind of the same thing. I think at this at this point it's just doing a make solid. The only reason I do that is just to ensure if there's any weird little um, errors in the mesh or, or weird triangles or weird little points or, or things like that, they just basically get erased when you do a make solid. So um, that's what I did there to ensure that looks good. <clears throat> Pardon me. And then now it's asking us to select a tooth from the tooth library to um, replace the tooth that is missing. So I'm going to select number 10 here. I'm just going to place it near where it, needs to, uh, where it needs to be and hit next. Now it's asking me to kind of better define where it needs to be um, more accurately. So I'm just using these little tools here, kind of getting the, um, uh, the flare right, getting the uh, rotation right there, kind of making sure it's in the, um, in alignment with the other teeth. And one thing, um, that I'm noticing now is that on my original selection, uh, when I was selecting what I needed to generate this, this flipper, I probably should have included the other lateral. Um, that would have been nice to have some sort of symmetry there to go against, but either way, this is fine for now. Again, I'm kind of just quickly doing this, so that looked pretty good for, for this. Um, and at this point, 
it's basically just sit back and relax because it's going to do a ton of steps automatically um, and there's really not much to do except just wait. So I'll kind of describe what's going on as it goes though. Um, at first you take that at uh, the tooth that you placed um, uh, in the right location. It basically the first thing it does is it hollows that out so then there's a kind of inside to that. It's going to make some of these other um, computations easier um, when I'm actually generating the flipper tooth. So it hollows it out, then it takes the flipper base selection, kind of makes like a solid model out of it, and does a Boolean difference against that hollowed model. And then I have a pretty good starting point for um, what this flipper tooth will be. And then from there, it's just a bunch of weird uh, remeshes and kind of um, selecting more and less rings and um, generating that little protrusion um, that will uh, go into the flipper base. And that's what it's doing right now. It's, we've already generated that little protrusion um, or the connector, and it is uh, doing a Boolean difference against the flipper base. But it's not just that, that um, flipper tooth with the protrusion. It's that plus a larger version of the, the flipper tooth um, in order to get a little bit of an offset there. Um, so it's both things um, uh, combined together Boolean against that, that flipper base. So that's what gives you that little bit of offset um, to, to get the resin to combine the two pieces. Uh, what it's doing now is it's checking to see um, if there's any parts of this flipper tooth that are, are touching the existing model. Usually that's going to be the case on the contacts there, which you can see it's selecting and and basically doing like a kind of like a like a grind like a grind reduction if you're doing a um, like with the, with your handpiece or something just kind of grind a little bit away there not too much but just a little bit and so that's the final product and um, you have the two pieces you got the base and the tooth that's on the model you can see the the spacing there in between the tooth and the base so there's some uh, room for the resin to flow in and to to tack cure before you do a full cure. Um, and the first thing I noticed right away is that that front part looks pretty hideous, you know, um, and I, I agree, but it's very thick. We did two millimeters. Um, regardless, I think it's important probably that you keep that on there um, just because when you print this piece out, it's almost going to, even if you don't intend to use it in the final flipper, um, it will be good to keep it on there just for, for printing purposes. It's almost going to act like a, like a support kind of. Um, so even if you intend to just grind that off at the very end, um, it's probably still good to keep that um, that piece on uh, anyway, or to even use that in in the selection as well. Just a little bit extra on the on the facial side. Um, you don't have to, but um, but anyway, that's kind of the what I've noticed. It makes it easier to set the tooth in and and to kind of do that tack curing. However. Um, it still bothered me a lot. I didn't. <laughs> I still didn't really like that. And in some cases, you are going to want the the buckle or the, the facial there. So um, to help with that a little bit, um, there's this button, the smooth uh, emergence profile, and that's what that green ring is. Um, I just have that selected at some point throughout the process, and now this button takes that face group and just kind of smooths it out, kind of reduces it a little bit. You can press that as many times as you want, and it attempts to uh, make that emergence profile of the tooth just look a little bit better. Um, you know, it only does a little bit. Um, and this is, again, kind of just like a, not a final product. You know, this is something that you may have to polish, grind, tweak a little bit um, clinically or in the lab uh, to get it to look very, very nice. Um, and that's part of the process here. This is just, again, a really good starting point for that. Um, in some cases, you may be able to just go straight to it. But um but the idea is that, yeah, you're probably going to have to do a little bit of polishing, a little bit of uh, tweaking here to get it to get it real nice. So, um, again, uh, if you still um, are just like, I don't like the way that that front part looks there, um, there's a pretty easy fix for that if you know what you're doing in, in, uh, in Mesh Mixer. You can do what's called a, a plane cut, and I'm kind of just looking right now to see where I could just chop off that front part um, to simulate like, you know, if you did 3D print it out and then you did grind that part off, what would this look like in the end? And uh, I'm just selecting the plane cut tool and just drawing, left clicking, well, in just a second here, I'll left click, 
um, and drawing a line kind of where I want to cut the piece off. And then I select the other side to make sure I cut the right piece off. There's a little tiny extra piece down there. I'm going to kind of just hit S, select that, hit X, that deletes it. Um, but that's basically what we're looking at now, if that were to be cut off. And now what we're looking at is something that looks pretty presentable, um, in my opinion. You know, I think that looks much better um, aesthetically. But again, the whole point there would be to print that out and then potentially adjust that emergence profile um, you know, with your lab tools or burrs or whatever, or even in um, even further in, in Mesh Mixer. You can go in there and kind of tweak it um, with some sculpting tools and make it look a little bit better, um, however you want. So, but that's what it would look like if you did kind of cut it off clinically or even if you did it just right now virtually. And there's that space still kind of just showing that there's a little bit of space in there to, to add the resin in um, so you can do your tack curing and make a full cure. Um, after that, what I'm doing right now is um, you can double click if there's two objects in the scene and they're both there. If one's active, you can double click on the other one that's kind of shadowed out. And if you then hide it immediately, it will show you on the other model um, where it was touching, where it was intersecting. And so um, that's just showing you that those are the areas where the tooth will actually be touching, like the stops, essentially. So. Um, it's only in a few places, which is, which is exactly what we want. Just a few small spots where the two pieces are actually touching each other in order to help maintain uh, orientation. Everywhere else, a small gap um, to allow the resin to flow in. Thanks for watching, and uh, if you like what you saw here, make sure you subscribe to this channel and like the video so you can get some more updates when I upload newer videos and kind of see more features and uh, stay current on what's going on. Also, make sure you check out d3tool.com and our Facebook group, D3Tool Users. All right, thanks a lot. Have a wonderful day.